Imagine an alien planet that isn't a sphere, but is a donut. The world has a dusty and hostile atmosphere, so you can't see the stars, nor can you travel into space. One day, a strange creature comes up to you and your alien friends and tells you that your planet is not spherical, but actually is a donut with a hole in it. You and your alien friends laugh. All you've ever seen is just the surface of your planet, so you have no idea as to the true shape of your world. But that night, you go home and start to wonder, what if the stranger was right? How can we actually tell if our planet has a hole right through its center? You search for answers and find a mysterious idea, written by a mathematician named Juan Carré. In there, you find your golden answer, a way to determine if your world is truly a donut without ever leaving its surface. So how do you do it? How do you determine if your world has a hole through the center without ever leaving the surface nor looking into space? The big idea is to study loops, large colossal loops that you can bend and stretch. In a world that has no holes, like a sphere, it is possible to deform any loop around the world into any other loop without cutting the loop. When there is a hole in your world, like a plane with a hole through the center, this is no longer possible. Take a look at these two loops for instance. It is not possible to deform the red loop into the blue loop without cutting it, precisely because of the presence of the hole in the center. This is the same for your donut-shaped planet. Build a massive loop like so around your world. Then you can try and test if there's any way to move your loop around to get this green loop right here. You'll find that it's impossible, precisely because of the fact that your world is donut-shaped and has a hole right through the center. So running this experiment, you just figured out that your world isn't a sphere like you previously thought. But hang on, all you've learned is that your world does have a hole, but how do you know that it's a donut? I mean, couldn't it also just be a flat plane with a hole in it? You go back to Juan Carré's work and you see that you've only just scratched the surface of his ideas. Look more closely at how the loops in your world work. Any loop that you create in your world can be deformed into a combination of loops around this plane and loops around this other plane. A loop around this plane can't be deformed into a loop around the other plane. In fact, you can classify any loop you have on your planet based on how many times it travels about each plane. On the other hand, when you look at the flat plane with a hole through the center, every loop that you draw can be described by how many times it goes around the hole in the center and in which direction. There's no two different planes that loops can be deformed into. There's only one. In other words, each loop can be assigned just one number, and that is how many times it travels around the center. This is quite different to your case on the donut where every loop must be assigned two numbers. How many times it travels about one plane and how many times it travels about the other? This means that the algebraic structures of loops are different on both worlds. From this, you can deduce that you're not living on a flat world with a hole through the center. If you were, you would expect to find that algebraic structure rather than the donut's algebraic structure. Okay, at this point, I think I've said enough that I can drop the alien living on a different world analogy, although it works pretty nicely. There's something here that I'm trying to say about mathematics with this analogy. It's called the fundamental group of topological space. The algebraic structure of loops on a planet is what a topologist would call its fundamental group. The planet can be replaced by just thinking about a general topological space. In this case, the fundamental group of the punctured plane looks like the integers. Every loop can be assigned a value based on how many times it travels around the puncture, with traveling in the clockwise direction being positive and traveling in the counterclockwise direction being negative. This algebraic structure is an invariant of your space, meaning that no matter how much you continuously stretch and deform your space, it will still have the same fundamental group. This is one of the many tools that topologists use to differentiate between different topological spaces. In our analogy, we differentiated between the donut and the punctured plane by seeing that they have different fundamental groups. The fundamental group of the donut was the pairs of the integers while the fundamental group of the punctured plane was just the integers. Because these groups are different, that means that two spaces can't be continuously deformed into each other. This is a nice construction because it allows us, in a sense, to measure the amount of holes that are in a topological space. 
Even in higher dimensions, we can still think about the fundamental group on a topological space. And so this allows us to compare different topological spaces in higher dimensions. However, you might notice that there are some limitations to the power of the fundamental group. For example, the plane and the sphere both have fundamental groups equal to zero, but they can by no means be continuously deformed into each other. In other words, two topological spaces that are not topologically equal might still have the same fundamental group. But what is true is that two topological spaces with different fundamental groups cannot be topologically equal. Hence, the fundamental group allows only to a limited extent to tell topological spaces apart. It's precisely because of this limitation that in the end, we really didn't end up confirming that we live on a donut-shaped world through our tests. Rather, we ruled out the possibility of living on a world without a hole, and we also ruled out living on a punctured plane. Another problem is that we didn't get an exact number for the amount of holes of a topological space with the fundamental group. Our result was that the fundamental group for the torus was z cross z, but when someone in real life asks you how many holes a donut has, you can't really just say z cross z holes. But even though we didn't get an exact number, we still got a kind of detector that can tell apart between spaces with holes and without holes. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to topology and telling different spaces apart. But nevertheless, I hope that you found it interesting and understandable at least at a fundamental level. I haven't covered all the concepts of the fundamental group very rigorously in this video because it's meant to be for a general audience rather than for only advanced math students. But if you are interested in learning more, there are many resources and books linked in the description below where you can learn all the specifics about the fundamental group with much more rigorous and precise treatment. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you again in the next one.